In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take any image out of design software, any image really that you find that you can use and turn it into an SVG. I'm actually going to show you two ways to do this. One is if you're working in something like design space where you're able to actually move the elements around. The other one will be what to do if you can't. So let's say, for example, you weren't able to move this text out of the way. I'll show you what to do in that case. Now, just a word of caution before I get into the tutorial, make sure when you're doing this that you have the right to use those images outside of that software. So for example, if you're working in design space and you're using um, a font like, like one of their premium fonts, or if you're using something out of their photo library, I don't know this for sure, but you may not have the rights to actually pull that image out of design space and alter it. So just keep that in mind as you're working with it. In this case, I've used fonts and images and stuff that I do have license to. So just make sure that you have that when you're working with it. All right, so let's get into how to actually go about this. All right, now for this tutorial, I'm going to be working in design space because that seems to be what people are requesting more often than not, but this will work for things like Canva and other things as well. To do this, you're going to need your design software, wherever you're working out of to start with. You're going to need some sort of snipping tool or screenshot tool, and then you're going to need Inkscape which is a free design software. So I'm going to use the native snipping tool that's on the computer as is, and we are basically going to create something like this. So for this first part, I'm gonna show you what's really the easiest method, which involves pulling everything off to the side so that each of the elements that you wanna work with are separate. So now we've got our backing, a leaf, and two pieces of text. So now that these are separated, I'm going to go into the snipping tool, click on new, and then we're just going to grab a picture of what we're working with. Now I was about to start, but do you notice how this leaf is selected? We don't want that box around the leaf when we do the snipping tool. So let me click away and then try that again. So going into the snipping tool, click on new, and now let's grab everything. Now, when you go into the snipping tool, you can see we've got everything and everything is spaced apart. Nothing's overlapping. And I'm just going to save this. All right, now it's time to go into Inkscape. And let me delete the previous version I have on here. Now go to File, Import, and select the file we just did a screenshot of. Click on OK. All right, now it comes in really, really big. So let me zoom out a little bit. All right, now you can see we've got our entire file in here. This is not yet an SVG. You can see on the right-hand side in the Objects tab, it calls it an image. So with it selected, go to Path and then Trace Bitmap. When you do Trace Bitmap for something like this, you wanna make sure you're on multiple scans and on colors. So multiple scans, colors, and then we have to change the number of scans to equal the number of colors in our image. And make sure when you do this, you include the background. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six colors present here, including the white background. So we want six scans. Now just click on apply. And you won't really see anything change over here, but now if you click and you drag, you'll see we've got two versions. The back version is the image that you imported and the front version is your new SVG. So click on the back image and delete it. Now click on this, right click and go to ungroup. Now we can start pulling our pieces apart. So as you can see, when we pulled this little piece over here, you can see that outline from the letters and stuff is still showing there. I'm gonna show you in a moment what to do with that. We'll pull this part of the leaf. If you see, looks like just based on the size of the box, there's some outlines left in there as well. So we'll deal with that in just a second and pull over this part and the text. 
All right, now let's delete the background. We're not going to need that. And then let's just take an inventory, see what we've got. So our text is fine. Actually, if you look at our text, we've got a little bit over here. So Cricut Design Space puts an outline on stuff. That's what we're going to have to clean up. It's pulling that outline and we don't want that. So we're going to clean that up. And to do that, we're going to do something very similar to slice. And let me show you what I mean. So let's start with the leaf. We're just going to grab a square and put a square over the part of the leaf that we want to keep. Now we've got that square selected. Hold down. Um, let's go to the cursor. Hold down shift and then select the rest of that square. So now you've got our little square over it and the bigger piece. Go to path and do intersection. This will give you something similar to slice where now we've just got overlap between those two shapes. You can do the same thing over here. We want this leaf, but none of the other outlines it grabbed. So let's just grab that. And again, while that's selected, go to the cursor, hold down shift and grab the larger piece, path, intersection. And this is, by the way, the main reason why using a lot of those like online tools, sorry, it looks like my circle is not selected. This is why using a lot of those outline tools aren't going to work for you because it can't do this cleanup as well as you can. So now we've got our leaf, put that back together. Let's go to this text. It looks like we must have something over here. So we'll just use a square in this case. Get as close to the text as possible. Go back to your cursor. So we've got the square selected. And now let's try to grasp the oh, focus. Here we go. Hold down shift. Whoops. It's not taking both of those. Let's try this. There we go. All right. So with both parts selected, go to path intersection. That's cleaned up, and now we've got a little cleanup over here as well. So let's do the same. Grab a square, get as close to our shape as possible. Go back to the cursor. Now we've got both selected path intersection. So the amount of cleanup you're going to have to do is going to vary each time, just depending on the shapes and the outline that the software puts in and all that. But it really only took a couple seconds, and now you can see we've got our backing, we've got our text but this part is on the top. So click on that object, set to bottom. And then now we can put everything back the way it was. And work with that. All right, now let me real quick show you another option for what to do if, for example, you're not in design space and you just got an image. Let's say you're not able to move the pieces apart. I'll show you the technique for that, and then we'll pull that into the Glowforge app and show you what to do there. But um, if this is all you need, all you're going to do is go to File, Save As, and it'll save as an SVG that your Glowforge app is going to read with no problem. All right, so let's switch over to the other method, and we'll go from there. All right, now for this method, you're going to import your file just as you did previously. And then we're going to go through the trace bitmap option, just like we did in the in method one. And we're going to get a similar result until we start spreading it apart. So let me show you what it looks like once we spread it apart. If the image is imported like this, where it's essentially all the pieces are layered. All right. So now when you pull it apart, you're going to see that essentially anything that was covered up by another image, like anything that was on a lower layer is going to have little cutouts essentially so you see like within that backing piece that far back piece we have cutouts for the letter and for the leaf so the main difference with this method is now we're going to need to cut away any of the excess outlines like we did in method one but we're also going to need to fill in the cutouts that we don't want so the cutouts from within that octagon we're going to have to fill in and that's pretty simple to do. You're essentially going to do use what's called a union tool. And it's 
essentially like welding multiple pieces together where we're going to create a piece on top of the part that we want to cut out and weld it. All right, now I'm going to start out by separating the outline of the leaf that we want from the rest of the outlines that were put together. And I'm just doing this by drawing a shape around the leaf, kind of like we did in method one. And once I have that shape, I'm going to click on that shape, hold down the um, shift tool and select the larger shape and then go to path and do intersection and that'll separate that. All right, now the next step is going to be filling in all the cutouts within this octagon that we don't want cut out because for example, let's say we're cutting this out of a piece of wood as the backing. We don't want to cutting out the letters. We want to be able to glue the letters onto it. So to do this, we simply need to create shapes all over the parts that we want to fill in and then select that shape, select the backing, and then do union. And that's going to be very similar to doing something like a weld in design space, where when you select two shapes in design space and do weld, it turns them into one full shape. That's exactly what we're doing here. So just create little shapes here and there, one shape at a time, and then just select the two, kind of your shape plus the backing and do union. All right, now we're ready to put it back together. You don't actually have to do this. You could put it back together in the Glowforge app. Um, but I like to import it in the way I want it to look. So make sure you set the octagon to be all the way in the bottom and then just drag your text back to where you wanted it. And once that's done, all you have to do is file, save, and import it into the Glowforge app. Now, once we're in the app, just as you normally would, you're going to click on the plus sign and then upload and select your image that we just created. And then Glowforge is just going to process the image. And once it's ready, you're going to see that. So we can just pull it to the side. And you can see now you've got essentially one object on the left side for every colored piece that you have. Glowforge has a tendency to root, to root colored stuff together. Um, but since each is a different color, they're each going to have their own operation that you could assign it. So you would just do it like you normally would, decide whether you want to cut, engrave, score each individual piece and then just proceed as you normally would. And now here's just a little tip for you. Um, since most of these pieces you might wanna do as different steps on different types of material, once you've selected what you want each of these on the left-hand side to be, um, just pull it all off to the side out of your cutting area, and then only move on what you wanna cut at a time. So we have this all off to the side. Let's ungroup it so we can pull out just what we want. And then let's say you want to cut this out of one material. We put that on your cutting area and then move it to the side when you're done. Then you move this on when you're ready to do it. And then you move it off when you're done. Anything that's off the cutting mat is basically set to ignore. Um, and then you could take all of this, let's say. Let's say we wanted to cut this out and engrave it on it. Um, you put this in the cutting area and then cut it and then pull it off when you're done. So that's just a way to make that a lot easier to work with. So you don't have to go into each individual one and set them to ignore, well, which, you know, is basically a few extra steps that you would have to do. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer. And if you did find this useful, please consider subscribing and sharing this with a friend.